Hello everybody, um, I'm Ruth Westerby, a doctoral candidate at SOAS, University of London and a member of the SOAS Centre for Yoga Studies Steering Committee. It's my absolute honour and delight to introduce um, Lubomir Ondraka to speak for us this evening in our first lecture of 2021. So thank you ever so much for kicking us off this, this year. Um, there were numerous topics that Lubomir could have spoken on for us and Jim of course chose the not um, option, hence tonight's title, Is the Bengali Nut Literature Really Nut? For the abstract, historians of Bengali literature have created a category called Nut Literature, which consists of several late medieval works of various genres. Scholars believe that the existence of these texts demonstrates the significant and long-term presence of nuts in Bengal, and that the nut teachings on yoga have profoundly influenced other religious traditions in this region. So in tonight's talk, Dr. Andraka will question both of these views. If I may just introduce him, Lubomir Andraka is a research fellow at the Department of Philosophy and Religious Studies of the Faculty of Arts, Charles University in Prague. His research is focused on the history of yoga, death and dying in India, and on religions and cultures of Bengal. He's contributed numerous chapters, articles, and encyclopedia entries. Most um, influential for me have been Perfected Bodies, Divine Bodies, and Other Bodies in the Natasiddha Sanskrit text in the Journal of Hindi Studies in 2015. And also the um, chapter contribution, What Should Munanak Do to Save His Life um, in Lorenzen and Munos's Yogi Heroes and Poets. So thank you for those which have been really influential for me and I will hand over to you. Um, and I look forward to hearing from everybody in the Q&A. Thank you. So good evening to everybody, at least in, in Prague it's evening. I don't know what, what's time at uh, different uh, places in the world. Uh, thanks for, for your uh, kind introduction. And uh, as you know, tonight we are uh, going to talk about uh, uh, about the uh, uh, Bengali nuts, and uh, the the title of the of the talk is uh, is very suggestive. So uh, you can you can probably guess uh, uh, what would be the answer uh, in the end of the talk. Uh, but uh, let's start. But before we start, uh, I would like to uh, to touch uh, three topics or to or to say three, let's say, warnings. Yeah. The, the, the first warning is that um, although this is a lecture for for the SOAS Yoga Center, uh, I will not talk about uh, yoga at all. Uh, I have suggested uh, some other topics for today's lecture, but uh, this is uh, Jim's choice. Uh, I'm very happy with this choice because this was also my uh, my favorite uh, favorite topic. But uh, uh, if you are interested in the history of yoga, uh, I would probably recommend uh, leaving you the lecture now because uh, you will not learn anything uh, about uh, about yoga uh, at all. It's it's, it's just a warning. Yeah. Uh, the second the second warning is that uh, that this is indeed a work in progress. I, I, I know it's a practical cliche that uh, scholars often use uh, when they when they are not sure what they are saying. But uh, in this case, it's um, uh, it's more than true. Uh, in fact, this topic is a is a byproduct uh, of uh, of other research. And uh, during that research, I realized that uh, uh, that uh, the automatically accepted relationship between uh, Bengali Nath literature and uh, Bengali Naths may not be true. And uh, since then, since then, uh, I have not further explored the subject. So what I am about to say today uh, is more um, uh, thinking out loud rather than, uh, than a coherent or uh, well-researched uh, topic. And the third uh, point is that, um, that it's, it's, it's quite a sensitive topic because it concerns the living community uh, and, uh, and its identity. Uh, today's Bengali Nats are naturally interested in, in, in their history. And uh, over the last, uh, let's say, 150 years or so, uh, they have created a narrative uh, about, uh, their, uh, about their identity and their history. 
And the problem is that uh, uh, my findings do not confirm uh, this, this narrative. And this may hurt some members of this community, uh, which of course is not my, my, my intention and I apologize for that. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to, to thank to, to all the Bengali Nats uh, who, uh, for, for, their, for their tremendous help in my research. Uh, without, uh, without their help, um, uh, I, would, uh, I would not have been able to, to obtain most of the materials for, for my research. So I am, I am really uh, very grateful, uh, grateful to them. So after this, um, brief uh, brief introduction we can we can we can really start and uh, we will start with uh, with uh, with the uh, question of uh, history of the bengali nats and uh, first uh, i will present a standard uh, understanding uh, of the history of the nats in bengal this communist opinion and really this is a practically uh, the consensus of, uh, of scholars. Uh, the, the scholars linked together four pieces of evidence. And uh, from these pieces, they built, uh, they built some uh, arguments about the history of the, of the Nats. The first piece is, uh, the first fact is, uh, is the presence of uh, Buddhist uh, Siddhas in Eastern India. The second one is uh, uh, the very mm, Nath literature, the Middle Bengali Nath literature, the, its, its existence. The third element is uh, are yogic elements in, in Middle Bengali works. And the fourth and the last uh, is uh, the presence of the Bengali Nath caste uh, in Bengal. And uh, scholars made uh, two conclusions uh, from, uh, from uh, this uh, understanding of history. Uh, the first conclusion uh, is that, uh, that the Nats uh, have been present in Bengal since the Pala dynasty. And uh, the second, uh, second conclusion is that uh, the Nats strongly influenced uh, Middle Bengali literature. Uh, now, the, the first and the fourth pieces of evidence uh, are in, in themselves, they are unproblematic. Uh, uh, I mean, as, a, as a isolated facts, uh, they, are, they are true. It's another thing whether, whether it is correct or useful to, to, to use them as evidence uh, in this whole argument. Uh, so first, I will briefly touch uh, these uh, two points. I mean, the first uh, uh, first point and the, and the fourth uh, fourth one, and then uh, the main uh, topic of the talk will be uh, the second and the th and the third uh, third um, uh, point. So about the Siddhas in Eastern India, it could be uh, it, it's as I said quite unproblematic. So so it could be quite uh, quite uh, brief and and, and clear. Uh, we know that uh, during the uh, during the Pala dynasty in, in the Pala Empire, uh, which uh, which ruled um, Eastern India in in different uh, times, uh, different parts of Eastern India, from let's say the eighth century up to the twelfth century, also the twelfth century, they was uh, almost disappearing. Uh, in that time. Uh, under this uh, under this uh, empire, uh, Eastern India was a stronghold of uh, Tantric Buddhism, uh, Tantric Vajrayana Buddhism. Uh, in the let's say since the 10th, 11th century, it was practically the only stronghold of Buddhism in India. And uh, as a, as a uh, product or part of of this uh, of this uh, Tantric uh, Buddhist environment, they were so-called siddhas or or uh, maha siddhas who were uh, quite i would say eccentric uh, tantric masters uh, initiated uh, in in the high, high highest practice uh, and uh, this practice was uh, highly uh, antinomian and uh, according to to their hagiographies 
most of the Siddhas were Easterners. I mean, they came from this part of, uh, of India, uh, Bengal, Magadha, Mithila, etc., Bihar today. And uh, it's important that uh, several figures uh, among these Buddhist masters are later shared by Shaiva Nadha tradition. And uh, from this Siddha Milieu uh, comes a collection of uh, tantric songs called uh, Charya Giti or Charya Padas in Bengali pronunciation, Chorja Giti, uh, probably from the 11th century, but the dating is not, uh, is not sure. Uh, and uh, the, the language of this collection is uh, old Bengali or old Maithili, I mean, in this, uh, in this uh, level of development of, uh, of languages uh, in Eastern India, uh, they, I mean, the Maithili or Oriya or, or Assamese or Bengali were not, not developed in, 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 the modern, in the modern level. So it's, it's difficult to decide in, in what, what kind of language it, it, it uh, in fact, it is. But uh, for, for most researchers, uh, this text is, uh, is clear evidence for the existence of the Nats in Bengal uh, in the 11th century at the latest, because some authors they did uh, they the text uh, earlier. Uh, there are there are several problems with this uh, with this uh, with this argument, and uh, uh, this is not uh, my topic today. But uh, so so I will touch only or mention only only two. I, so. What's the first question is, what's the relation between, between the Buddhist Siddhas and the later Nadha Sampradaya? I mean, the, the, this relation is unclear and, uh, and uh, it uh, needs a lot of further research. And uh, Jim Mellinson started uh, something, uh, I mean, his, his, um, his findings are, are important for, for this question, but uh, still we have uh, a lot of unknown, uh, unknown things. And uh, a related question is, uh, is is the question of continuity because uh, Buddhist Siddha Milieu disappeared from India uh, by the end of the 12th uh, century. And uh, as I said, these uh, Siddhas were individual masters, uh, initiated ascetics, uh, practicing the, the, the highest form of uh, tantric uh, rituals. So they, they represented, uh, I would say, the elite of the elite. And uh, there are no hints that they ever created a massive uh, lay environment uh, that would remain after their uh, disappearance. So a lot of questions are connected with this, uh, with this connection. I mean, with this uh, uh, question whether whether we can we can start uh, whether the history of the Nas in Bengal indeed begins with uh, with Buddhist Buddhist siddhas, but uh, but this is not the topic for for today's uh, today's talk. So I will skip to the uh, to the uh, fourth uh, point in the in the argument, and uh, uh, this is about. Uh, uh, Bengali Nats or, or Jugis, as I will explain. Uh, today, uh, Bengali Nats uh, form an endogamous caste. Uh, they, they belong to the so-called OBC stratas, uh, it means the uh, other backward classes. It's a classification of, uh, of uh, uh, communities in, in, in India. And uh, they are, uh, they are all householders. It means uh, there are no ascetics um, uh, in, this, in this community. Uh, regarding the re religion, there are both uh, Shaivas and uh, Vaishnavas. And uh, they have absolutely no relation to yoga in, in any, uh, any way. Uh, ex yeah, we, I, I will come back to this, to this question. Uh, Regarding the, the geography, uh, today the Nathas are strongly present or dominantly present in, uh, in South Assam, uh, particularly in, the, in, in, in Kachar district, uh, also in, in Tripura 
and um, at um, in in northern Bangladesh, I would say still had uh, a bit uh, Rongpur Rajshahi, but uh, in Bangladesh mainly in Silhet, uh, a bit in in Chittagong. Uh, of course, there are also some some nuts in in Western Bengal, uh, but uh, those in West Bengal are uh, mostly from from Bangladesh who came uh, after the partition, uh, because they were they were Hindus, and as we know, um, the major majority of Hindus uh, left uh, Bangladesh after its um, its creation as, as, as Eastern Pakistan. Uh, now. Uh, Thanks to quite uh, rich colonial sources, we know that uh, a lot of changes happened uh, in, uh, in with this community uh, at, at the uh, in the last decades of the of the nineteenth century. Uh, the first visible change uh, is uh, is their name because uh, until almost until the end of the 19th century they were known in bengal as as jugis so the standard name was jugi it's just a, a local pronunciation of the word yogi so the sanskrit yogi in other parts of north india uh, it's pronounced jogi but in, in bengal uh, in eastern india it's it, it's jugi and they changed they, their, their name to, to Nath, Nathas. Uh, the second change uh, uh, was, was their, their, their profession, because uh, until, let's say, the mid 19th century, the majority of us in uh, Eastern Bengal, in Eastern India, uh, they were weavers. But uh, because the Textile industry almost collapsed uh, in in that in in that time. I mean, mid mid nineteenth century. They were pushed to change their their profession, and uh, most of them uh, then took um, agriculture. And the third change, what uh, started to, to to happening at the at the end of the nineteenth century, uh, was uh, about was their their social status. Uh, now I am a bit simplifying, but uh, but uh, at, uh, they, they they were they were they were mostly untouchables uh, in in the nine, uh, in the nineteenth century, and uh, I mean at different places uh, their status in the caste hierarchy was slightly different, but generally speaking, they they were they were um, untouchables, and uh, at the end of the nineteenth century, in it was said. Uh, all Indian movement, uh, the in among among the, these uh, low castes or untouchable castes, uh, they they struggled for higher uh, social status and uh, they push for this social mobility, and many of the of these communities were were successful and uh, the Nags belong to this uh, successful uh, community. So they really slowly, it, of course, it didn't happen uh, at once. It took uh, a few decades, but uh, uh, they, they really uh, managed to, 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 to went up in the, in the uh, social hierarchy in, in Eastern India. Uh, now, uh, in fact, this this question of, of uh, social mobility was the uh, was the original uh, question that I started to uh, that I wanted to to research, and uh, when I when I started looking for for the presence of the Jugi caste in Bengal before this period when when this, when all the changes uh, started, I mean let's say mid nineteenth century, uh, I came. To, to a surprising result. And uh, the result is that uh, there is no clear evidence for, for the present of uh, the Nats or Jugis in that time until the 18th century in, in this part of India. I mean, in, in uh, Eastern India and what uh, was called in that time undivided, uh, undiv undivided Bengal. Uh, now I cannot repeat uh, the, the argu arguments that led me to this uh, conclusion. Um, all details uh, will be will be present in the contribution to the volume on the Nats uh, that will be published uh, this year or 
inshallah, uh, I hope it will be published. Uh, but the, 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 the result is clear. So, so uh, the Nats were newcomers to Bengal, uh, somewhere from, uh, from the west of India, who came sometime during the 17th century. Because we have quite uh, strong evidence in the 18th, we have no evidence until, until the end of the 16th century. So, so sometime during the 17th century, uh, uh, the Jugis uh, came, uh, came to, to Bengal. Uh, their coming is related to, to, to the newly uh, established uh, Mughal power in, in Bengal and, and to, uh, to the growing uh, textile, uh, textile industry. And uh, it, was, it was this discovery uh, that made me think uh, about, uh, about the relationship uh, between the Nats and the Bengali Natha literature. Uh, yeah, and before we, we start this, it's just explanation of the, of the picture that you, you have on, 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 the, on, on uh, the invitation, it's last page. Uh, this, is a, this is a photo from, from South, uh, South Assam, from uh, one small village in, in Kachar district. And uh, these are householder, householder nats, uh, and they celebrate Shivaratri, because Shivaratri is the main, main festival for, for the nat community here, because here, here uh, the nats are Shaivas, and some other parts are, are Vaishnavas, but here are Shaivas, and Shivaratri is the, the main, almost the only real festival uh, for, for them. So this is just the uh, explanation of the, uh, of the picture. Okay, so... Uh, Let's uh, let's uh, begin uh, our investigation about the uh, about the Bengali Nath literature. Uh, historians of uh, uh, Bengali literature use a category called uh, Nath literature, Nath Sahitya or Shahito in, in in Bengali, and uh, all scholars include two works in this category. Both works are narrative poems. The first one is uh, called Victory of Goraknath, and I will come back uh, to, this, uh, to this work. And the second, uh, uh, second one is a, a poem about uh, Gopi Chandra. And uh, as we will hear uh, after a few minutes, uh, some scholars include also other works into, into this category, but the first two are, are the, uh, let's say, the standard, the, the, the default, default works. So let's, uh, let's start with the, with the work called uh, uh, Victor, Victory of, of Goraknath. Uh, this is a, this is a well-known uh, all Indian story uh, about, um, about uh, how Goraknath uh, saved uh, his guru Meenanath uh, from the kingdom of uh, women uh, because Minanath was uh, going to die uh, due to his uh, um, excessive uh, sexual life, so let's say. And uh, th this story is uh, attested or at least alluded to in, in uh, several Indian languages. But um, unfortunately, nothing certain can be said about, um, about its origin. Uh, it probably comes from Southern India. We have the earliest uh, some allusions to it or more developed story from in South, uh, South Indian Sanskrit uh, text. Um, uh, Tantric text, in fact, Matsyendra Samhita. Uh, but we know that uh, by the end of the 14th century, at the latest, the story was popular also in, in Eastern India, at least in Mithila, because, uh, because the famous Maithili uh, poet, Vidyapati, uh, composed a number of songs on this uh, subject. And um, later, we don't know when, uh, probably someone else created a drama using uh, these songs. And uh, this drama is called uh, Victory of Goraknath, uh, Goraksha Vijaya in, in, in Maithili. Uh, in, in Bengali, 
uh, I mean, the Bengali version uh, is a long uh, narrative poem. Uh, it has more than 2000 lines. It's not a bad poetry. Uh, I would not say the excellent, but uh, not, not quite good poetry. And uh, we have uh, about, uh, about 10 complete uh, manuscripts and also about, uh, again, 10 uh, incomplete or some fragments of, of, this, uh, of this story. The majority of, uh, of, of these manuscripts uh, uh, has been collected in Chittagong. So in the most Eastern part of, uh, of, uh, of Bengal or Chittagong or Arakan in that time. Uh, the oldest manuscripts, uh, manuscript is uh, from the late uh, 18th century. Uh, the rest uh, are from, from the 19th century, but that's quite common, to, common in, in, uh, in Bengali, um, uh, Bengali manuscripts because most of the Bengali manuscripts are very late. It's, uh, it's exceptional to have uh, earlier, earlier manuscripts, so that's nothing, uh, nothing uh, uh, abnormal. And, uh, there are even three editions of, uh, of, the, of the text. Uh, no one is critical, but one is uh, pretty good. And uh, there, is, uh, there is one translation, the, the only translation is uh, into the Russian language, yeah? at least what I know. Maybe there are other translations in less known languages, but uh, I am aware only about this translation into the Russian. Uh, it's not very good, by the way. Uh, all the manuscripts are quite similar uh, and uh, it means or it, it shows that uh, that uh, there was one original source of this uh, of this poem of this uh, of this text and uh, also also uh, various names appear in the colophons of this text the most likely author is some Sheikh Faizullah, or, uh, again, the name is spelled variously, Faizullah Fouj, in, in Bengali, Sheikh Faizullah, etc. It doesn't matter. Uh, we, don't, we don't know uh, anything certain about him. Uh, there is uh, much debate about uh, about his. Uh, uh, I mean, whether he he, he is the same Sheikh Fauzula as other Sheikh Fauzula who wrote other Middle Bengali works. That's not so important uh, at this at, at this moment. Most probably, he lived in in the 17th century in in Chittagong, and uh, the question is. Whether, whether there are any any yoga or natha elements in in his work, uh, as I as I said, it's a, it's a narrative uh, poem, not a shastra uh, about uh, yoga. Uh, so, the main goal of this poem uh, was to entertain. It was it was definitely it was certainly performed by singers, and. Uh, Technical yoga terms are are used uh, rather rather rarely here and there. There are some terms like ida pingala, yeah. and uh, there are two or th three uh, short passages on doctrine in the text, but that's all. So nothing nothing suggests that. Um, uh, that the author was an advanced yogi. He was a good poet, uh, but uh, he certainly had a general knowledge uh, about some yoga or tantra uh, topics uh, that was common in this region at the time. And it was common even, even uh, among Muslims. That's, that's important. Uh, Regarding the historical importance of this of this work of this text, this composition, uh, this story as a whole um, uh, and and this poem in particular uh, have never become popular in Bengal. Uh, the circulation of this poem and uh, its performance were probably limited uh, to the most eastern part uh, uh, of, uh, of Bengal, of undivided Bengal. I mean, uh, to mainly to Chittagong, uh, probably also to uh, region around, I mean, Kumila, uh, Moimonshing, maybe Tripura. Uh, and uh, 
nothing suggests that that the poem was created or or transmitted uh, by by the Nats. So it's definitely non non Natha and non Natha work. So let's uh, look uh, at the at the second work. Uh, the second work, uh, which is always included in the Bengali Natha literature, uh, is the story uh, of Prince uh, Gopi Chandra. Again, the name varies in different texts and sources. Uh, Gopi Chandra is uh, common. Gopi Chand is, is probably uh, even more common. Uh, Gobinda Chandra, Gobi Chand, Govi Chandra, etc., etc. The story is a bit uh, uh, complicated, but uh, but its uh, its main line is uh, how uh, Prince uh, Gopi Chandra uh, must obtain immortality uh, from Siddha uh, uh, called uh, Harepa or or Jalandhara. It's the same person, Harepa or Jalandhara, uh, because otherwise he will die at the age of 18. So this is the main, uh, main, main line. And uh, again, uh, this is a pan-Indian story. Uh, the story that is uh, extremely popular, uh, particularly in, in uh, Western India, I mean in uh, Rajasthan, Punjab, uh, Gujarat, uh, Maharashtra. Um, I am not so sure about uh, South India. At least I did not come across any any South Indian version of this of this story. But I I do not read any South Indian language, so uh, I cannot say anything about about this. Uh, in in Bengali, uh, we have two uh, very different uh, types uh, of this composition, and also very different uh, names. That's also why I did not uh, did not provide any any particular title, uh, contrary to the earlier uh, text, because uh, victory of uh, Goraknath, Goraksha Vijaya, or Gorkhobijoya in Bengali, it's quite common uh, uh, title. But uh, uh, this story uh, is known under very different uh, names. Names, uh, Gopi Chandra Shonash or uh, Gopi Chandra Gan, Gopi Chandra Panchali, etc., etc. Uh, so we have two different uh, different uh, types of the of the story. The first one are uh, oral compositions. It's a it's a genre of uh, uh, oral compositions called uh, palagan in, in in Bengali, and. Um, these are usually very long poems uh, performed uh, during uh, several uh, um, several evenings or or even whole nights uh, by the groups of uh, professional singers, uh, both Hindu and Muslim, and uh, we have one edited uh, the the the. the, the Best edited text from, from of this genre uh, is um, it has more than, uh, if I remember well, uh, ten thousand lines, and it's it's purely it's a purely Vaishnava text uh, produced uh, most probably by the uh, by the Jad Boishnop uh, cast. So so it means you have uh, you have a lot of these uh, horrible horrible and uh, horinam and uh, a lot of Vaishnava material. And it's clear that uh, that the authors and uh, and the singers of the text uh, have never never seen any real Natha ascetic, uh, because uh, for example, when when uh, Gopi Chandra uh, takes uh, sannyas and he, uh, he he becomes an ascetic. Uh, the text describes him, and he he's described as a, as a Vaishnava uh, vairagi. I mean, purely a typical picture of Vaishnava vairagi. Uh, and uh, the performances of of this composition were were uh, limited uh, to North uh, North Bengal, uh, particularly to the district uh, to two to two districts, uh, Rangpur and uh, and uh, Rajshahi. Now, besides besides these oral compositions, uh, we have uh, uh, written poems, uh, and uh, 
poems with, uh, with, with a known author. Uh, the best uh, published version uh, was composed by some uh, Shukur Muhammad, if I uh, make his name more standard, because in Bengali sources it's usually Mamut, Shukur, Shukur Mamut is, is, a normal, is a normal form used in, in, in the manuscripts. Uh, Again, we don't know much about, about this person, but uh, he probably composed uh, this poem uh, at the beginning of the 18th century, and uh, he lived in, in uh, Rajahi district. And his poem is again quite, uh, quite long. It's uh, almost uh, 6,000 uh, lines uh, long. Uh, and uh, it's quite a good poetry. Uh, definitely much better than, uh, than than these oral compositions because they are uh, uh, they are quite boring if you have to read at least uh, let's say ten thousand lines in once and uh, you know they, they, uh, the main point was was and is their performance so uh, whether whether uh, whether uh, any composition of this kind was successful or not uh, depends on 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 the abilities of, of the of the singers or uh, or of all the group that uh, that performed uh, performed this uh, this composition uh, now and again the same question are there are there any uh, any yoga elements in in this um, in this uh, work uh, in the oral compositions in these palagans uh, uh, there are absolutely no yoga elements and uh, it's uh, it's quite I mean, you know the, the the whole story is about uh, about the quest for immortality and uh, uh, this is my main uh, research topic in in uh, in uh, uh, yoga in uh, natha texts etc and uh, i remember when i was reading for the first time because i knew that that's about immortality and so when i was reading the uh, whole story for the first time uh, uh, i was so eager to find how Gopi Chandra will get, uh, how will he become uh, immortal? Uh, what will be the teaching? What will be the practice? What will be the technique, etc., etc. And uh, I was so disappointed. It was really frustrating because you have to read uh, to read thousand and thousand lines of uh, colloquial, very colloquial language. It's it's not easy. It's not a standard Bengali. It's a North Indian Rangpur Bengali. So uh, the language is is quite complex. And finally, I learned that the way how he how he how he became immortal is, is I mean that, that that's funny because. Uh, 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 Haripa was supposed to to teach him, yeah, and uh, but uh, it in fact it did not happen be because Haripa uh, wanted uh, wanted uh, wanted ganja. Uh, he had no money for ganja, so so he sold. Uh, he sold Gopi Chandra uh, on uh, at the market on bazaar uh, to one herlot, and. Uh, and spent a year somewhere meditating with Ganja and pretty happy, etc., etc. And when he was pushed uh, really to teach him, uh, uh, teach him uh, how to become immortal, uh, what he did, he he spat out silivat into into the foot uh, with uh, with uh, the mantra of immortality, yeah. And uh, this uh, this uh, food was uh, awful, and so Gopi Chandra said, "Oh, I will not eat it. That, that's horrible." And uh, and um, uh, Haripa said, "Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, it's it's awful. That's true. So just uh, uh, cover your eyes with with left uh, left hand and eat it with your right hand, and everything will be okay." And this is the way how how Gopi Chandra uh, uh, got uh, immortality. Yeah. So if you are looking for for any technique or any any more, uh, let's say, a complex uh, complex uh, doctrine, uh, it, you will be definitely disappointed. You know, just spitting out of uh, the mantra into the food and eating the food, and and that's it. Uh, so uh, definitely not. Um, I mean, it's it's funny for the audience. I understand, but it's uh, it's the, it's frustrating if you are looking for for the uh, uh, techniques of uh, of uh, yogic immortality. Uh, but, but back uh, back to the to the topic of yoga uh, yoga elements. Uh, so uh, 
in the, as I said, there are no yoga elements in, in, the, in, the, in the oral compositions. There is one short doctrinal passage in, uh, in Shukur Mahmud texts, but it's very general. And uh, as I said, it's clear that the only purpose of these poems was to entertain. Uh, they were funny stories. And the only slight relation to the Naks uh, of these poems uh, is the fact that uh, some of its performers in Rangpur, Rangpur district were jugis. Yeah. And in fact, the first collected, uh, collected uh, work on it uh, um, was uh, collected among, among jugis in, in, in Rangpur. Uh, Regarding the historical importance of, of, this, of this poem, again, except the, the North Bengal, the story was not popular in Eastern India. And, uh, and I am aware that, uh, that almost all scholars believe that this story comes from Bengal, but uh, I do not think so. Uh, this story is extremely popular in in Northern India and as I said, particularly in the West. And it is part of folklore uh, here. And uh, this never happened in Bengal. And uh, all, all earliest references that I know come from, from outside Bengal. Uh, the first allusion is uh, already in, in Marathi, uh, Leela Charitra, the encounter uh, between Gobinda Chandra and, uh, and uh, Jalandhara. Uh, th there is uh, uh, one line uh, in, in, uh, that, uh, in allusion of, uh, to this story in, in uh, Muhammad Malik Jayasi, uh, Padumavat, so that's uh, 15, 1540, if I remember well. Uh, uh, there is the story in Taranatha's history of Buddhism, again, the encounter between uh, Govinda Chandra and Jalandhara. And Taranatha uh, put this story to Malva, to the West, etc., etc. Uh, but I mean, for, for, for better understanding of the story, I mean, definitely uh, some comparative study uh, uh, is needed uh, um, for, but uh, since it is attested in so many languages, it might be some collaborative work of, uh, of um, uh, different scholars. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, these were the two main, main, main works, but uh, I said that there are also that uh, the, the historians of Bengali literature often uh, include also other works in the genre of uh, of uh, Natha Sahitya, and uh, the first work is is a play about uh, Gopi Chandra uh, that comes from from Nepal. Uh, it's written in Bengali, but uh, it's produced uh, in uh, at a Nepali court in the mid. 17th uh, century uh, and one work is edited uh, and probably there are some uh, other other works in manuscripts but definitely it's a, it's a courtly courtly poetry be because bengali and maithili uh, besides sanskrit of course were uh, let's say literary languages of uh, of uh, nepal uh, nepal court in that time so again that's definitely not a natha uh, work there are other other texts that they are usually included in, in um, uh, or regarded as Natha, natha uh, works, uh, more technical yogic works. Uh, definitely the most important uh, work of this kind is a text uh, called The Garland of Bones uh, in Bengali Har, Harmala. Haramala. Uh, for for some reasons uh, uh, unknown to me, this text became very popular among the Bengali Nat intellectuals uh, in the 20th, 20th century. So they, they prepared five editions of this work that's that's exceptional you know, it's a, a local colloquial text in horrible bengali uh, i mean horrible it's a very colloquial bengali let's say and uh, we have five editions of the text there yeah, that's that's really uh, very unusual but uh, i I wrote a paper on it. It should be published this year again. And, uh, and I'm pretty sure that uh, this text was not 
produced uh, in the nut milieu and uh, that it, uh, it, it, it does not contain any Nadha, Nadha doctrine, Nadha teaching, anything. So again, there's no relation to, uh, to the Nats. There are also some other texts, but uh, uh, I mean, of this genre, this technical, more Shastric, let's say Shastric yogic texts, uh, but uh, uh, there, is, uh, uh, there is no reason uh, to, uh, to uh, it would be not useful to list them all because what's common to all these works is that uh, they they have no relation to to the nuts As, and and these works are classified as not literature by scholars only because these authors believe that if any text has a substantial yoga material then the text must be not not her work but uh, there is no reason for this assumption uh, as we know nuts were not uh, exclusive uh, uh, holders of uh, yoga okay so uh, the last uh, last topic uh, yoga elements in middle bengali uh, texts uh, so it's uh, it's it's true that uh, in many bengali medieval texts, there are uh, elements of yoga teachings. Uh, and the, the earliest uh, works uh, are Sufi uh, yoga texts from, let's say, um, at least the 16th, uh, 16th uh, century. And the main, main topics of, uh, uh, of these works uh, or, this, uh, or these yogic passages or yogic or more sometimes I would say more tantric uh, are cosmogony, embryology, and particularly what's, what's called in literature deha tattva. So the, the teaching about the body, uh, the let's say tantric physiology or tantric anatomy of the, of the body. So the, the, and the Bengali texts are, I would say, almost obsessed with, with, this, with this topic of, of deha tattva. And, uh, Scholars, scholars believe, uh, as I repeated many times uh, tonight, that, uh, that uh, this yogic teaching in this Middle Bengali text must come from the Nats. And um, I think that this is unlikely uh, for, for at least two reasons. Uh, as we have just uh, seen, there is no yoga text in Bengali that we can say with certainty that it was composed by the Nats. And second, uh, as, as I said, the Nats householders came to Bengal uh, probably in the, in the uh, 17th century. But the Nats ascetics were never present here at all. I know that this question needs further research, uh, but so far uh, in my analysis of historical uh, sources, uh, I have not come across a single piece of clear evidence uh, that the not aesthetics were ever present in Bengal. Uh, it's possible. Uh, and probably even, even, even probable that, uh, that there were some individual uh, ascetics, uh, not ascetics here, uh, but we have no evidence for an uh, established uh, Nadha work. Uh, I mean, ashrams, uh, matkhas, uh, pilgrimage places, uh, temples, etc. Uh, simply put, Bengal is missing uh, from from the historical map of the uh, ascetic Nadha Sampradaya. Uh, so the situation is quite simple. Uh, no Nats means uh, no Nath influence. Then the the question remains: So what 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 are what is the source or what are the sources uh, of uh, of these uh, yoga passages or yoga tantric passages in in uh, Middle Bengali texts? Uh, I think that the, the main or dominant uh, source uh, 
are Eastern Kaula Shakta Tantras. Uh, we know that uh, throughout practically the, the entire second millennium, uh, Bengali tantrics or Bengali Shakta authors uh, produced an enormous volume of tantric uh, uh, works in Sanskrit. And uh, sure, the, the, their main subject uh, uh, was uh, tantric ritual. Uh, with all these mantras and uh, and uh, particle in the middle rituals, etc. But uh, many texts, I mean, these uh, Kaula Shakta works have chap full chapters or substantial passages uh, on yoga. And these works, these tantras, were extremely popular and widespread in, in this region. Uh, we have hundreds of, of manuscripts from all part of, uh, of, of, uh, of Bengal, including the most Eastern Eastern parts of, uh, like, like uh, Chittago. The second source that might be a bit uh, surprising uh, uh, is um, uh, are erotic manuals, <laughs> Kama Shastra, Kama Shastra literature, and uh, uh, we, th there are some clear parallels uh, between passages in in these Bengali uh, Bengali yogic texts uh, and uh, Sanskrit erotic manuals. Uh, particularly this topic, I mean, about all. Both sources that I just I've just mentioned definitely need further research. I have to I have to prove it. But as I said at the beginning, it's a work in progress or thinking uh, thinking uh, out loud. Uh, so I would like to to uh, to to research these uh, these topics more. But at at, at, at the present time, I, I believe that uh, that uh, what what uh, what I said that the main source were uh, Kaula Shakta Tantras and the second probable source. There may be some other sources. But uh, these two, I believe, uh, uh, I have uh, somehow, uh, at least somehow, uh, identified. So uh, we are at the end, uh, and uh, we should answer the question of <laughs> that we put at the beginning. So uh, whether is the Bengali not uh, literature really not? Uh, and sure, the question is whether very suggestive. But first, uh, I. I would say small yes, <laughs> and uh, and this is uh, this is yes in the sense uh, that uh, this literature, I, I mean, these two narrative poems basically uh, are about about the Nats. So in this sense, yes, we can say it's not literature because it's about about Siddhas, about uh, Nats, uh, Nats yogi masters, uh, but. Uh, I mean, if we if we accept this point of view, then uh, then we can we can say that uh, I don't know, for example, uh, that uh, that Kalidasa's uh, Kumara Sambhava is a Shaiva work because it's about Shiva, and uh, I don't think that uh, this is a, a good way um, uh, how to look at uh, at Indian literature. Uh, so so my answer to this question is no. Uh, this literature has no direct relation uh, to the Nats. It was not produced by the Nats. It was not transmitted uh, by Nats, and it has no relation to to the Nats. Uh, of course, uh, th does it mean that uh, that uh, there were no yogis uh, yogis in Bengal at all? Uh, definitely not. Uh, they they were they were many yogis in Bengal, and they still are. Many yogis in Bengal, so they are they are numerous, they are influential, uh, but uh, they they form they form a, a milieu that that I that I call a preliminary a, a sahajiya milieu, and uh, it's very general general term, uh, and it this milieu consists of tens and tens of various uh, various uh, lineages, uh, uh, Muslim fakirs, uh, baals, uh, many small lo local traditions, guru, guru lineages, etc, etc. And uh, 
but they have something in common and what's 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 in common is is the, their main interest and their main interest is in 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 a body in in what what's called in dehatatva and their practice is mainly uh, sexual tantric tantric yoga and this this uh, this milia is extremely rich but the nats are absent from it and uh, i do not believe that uh, they ever contributed to it it would be very interesting to talk about about this uh, topic about these uh, yogis in bengal but uh, it would be another and very different uh, talk so that's uh, all from me thanks uh, for your attention Thank you, Lubomir. That's fantastic. Um, uh, just a, a quick note for those of you attending. Um, I've dropped the li a direct link to the Slido in the chat uh, for you to drop your questions in, so you can click that and 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 uh, go ahead and do that. Whilst uh, people are getting their questions in, um, what I'm really struck by is uh, how difficult it can be to ascribe intentionality authorship identities when working with these kinds of texts and that it's not as simple as saying well it's got yoga in it therefore it's a yoga text or it's got yogis in it therefore it's a yoga text or it's got nats in it therefore it's a nath text and i think what you've given us um i know you said this this is a work in progress and therefore what you've given us a, is a really good sense of the journeys that we go on as researchers to figure these things out and um, and i think that's that's um that's been really uh really vibrant you've brought that to life in a really beautiful way i think um uh, so thank you um i'm gonna pass over to ruth um uh, i know we have a couple of people who want to ask questions not least I, we know jim is lurking out there somewhere um and uh thank you again <laughs> thank you very much Luba, me and thank you theo um there are no questions yet in the slido so um maybe i can kick off with <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure. Well, I suppose it's a bit of a big question, but yes, what would your Deha Tattva, like, could, can you sort of sum that up, like how yoga is um, approached, how this sexual yoga is approached? Uh, yeah, that's uh, quite complex. So, uh, as, just, uh, as just Thea also, also said, uh, the, uh, the question of all this classification, yeah, what do you mean? What, what, what do you mean by yoga? What do you, what do you mean by, by tantra? What, what, what's, what's the yogic practice, etc., etc. It's, uh, there are, as we know, there are no clear cuts. There are no, no clear definitions and uh, uh, no, no clear, clear borders. And, uh, and particularly, I mean, one problem is that 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 all the the Nadha literature was uh, was. Uh, researched mainly by historians of literature and uh, and 100 years ago i mean this study started 100 years ago when our knowledge when our knowledge about about what's what's yoga uh, what's what's our what are yoga techniques uh, and practices what's tantra was extremely limited you know but but they they these scholars in that time they 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 opened the debate they 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 fixed some 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 questions and 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 answers and we still i would say struggle with 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 this with this heritage yeah. I, I i would mention just one one work that's uh, that the famous shashi bhushan dashgupta work uh, obscure religious cults all all scholars still are using this work and 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 he really opened opened new 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 horizons and and he he was extremely well read scholar and he knew all these manuscripts because in that time almost nothing was was published at, and but uh, but the, the the definition what what what's what's yoga in that time was very um, i would say very broad yeah if you if you have anything on body yeah that something is happening with 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 body then the scholars say okay this is this is yoga material uh, we don't have any yoga let's say more um, more technical practices like asanas or mudras bandhas nothing like this in these texts we have pranayama or not not even pranayama it's not pranayama it's uh, this the question typical questions in these in these texts are are what's uh, uh, 
about about different uh, pranas yeah we have some pranas where where's the prana in the body in this time in that time yeah but but no description of any particular pranayamic techniques or any other techniques. Yeah. So, so these Bengali texts are mainly when when we say when we can say that's that's yoga in this text, they are mainly concerned with with the description of the body, what's happening with the body, uh, when what, 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 what circulating of prana and circulating of the sperm. That's also the main question. Yeah, the bindu, the, or it's usually called called bindu or, or chandra, chandra, the moon in 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 the body. How 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 it circulates in the body in in particular time, etc. etc. So it's. Uh, yeah, true. It's it's very different from what we what we normally understand yoga. If we read, let's say, the early Hatha Yoga texts, uh, uh, but uh, by scholars it's called yoga. It's in my eyes, it's more more let's say tantric material than 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 yogic. Yeah. Uh, but but in some texts we have chakra we have talks about chakras. Yeah. Um, so this classification is is indeed very very tricky. Yeah, true. Thanks ever so much, Lubomir. Can I go to Hunter? I think um, you were just about to be unmuted, Hunter, if you want to ask your question out loud. There you are. Um, there you go. Oh, thanks. Um, so I had a couple questions. Would you like me to ask both of them now or do one? Yeah, go for wait? both of your questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay. Um, so my first question was, um, so first of all, thank you so much for the talk. It was great. Um, uh, regretfully, I haven't done enough research in this area to ask um, really uh, in-depth questions, but just a couple of clarifying questions, I guess. So when you say that particular texts are not, um, quote unquote, not works, um, uh, is what you mean to say that they don't have a connection with the not Siddha tradition or traditions? Uh, to, to any connection to not sampradaya or or even even householders you know because uh, the, the, the householders uh, uh, today or even in colonial sources we have we have the earliest references to the not jugis at the time we have from the let's say beginning of the or the end of the 18th century and we know that in that time there were very poor uneducated weavers and they, they, they there is no connection to, to they have no connection to yoga except their title and that's 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 the big question you know because you have jugis <laughs> they are they are clearly called yogis jugis uh, uh, and i have no answer why what's what's their history because we we should we should um, we should explore their history so they, they are called jugis by they but they they do not do any 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 kind of yoga and when i am talking when i when i said that something has no direct no relation to to the nuts i mainly mean uh, Ascetic Nars, ascetic sampradaya, uh, that, that what we know from other parts of India, because usually there is some, let's say, symbi at least some symbiosis when, when the householders and ascetic Nats are at the same place, you know. So usually, for example, these these ascetic Nats serve to the householders uh, in, in some rituals, but uh, that's, that's, that, that did not happen in Bengal, because we have no references uh, the, the, to, to, to these uh, ascetic Nats. And these householders uh, had to uh, to do all the rituals for themselves you know so they 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 did not have any uh, more educated or or, or other other uh, other ritualists for for their for for their uh, normal everyday uh, religious life yeah. okay thanks that that's that's really helpful clarification uh okay so my second question was and i I think I probably know the answer to this, but um, so uh, is your claim that the Nats uh, currently present in Bengal um, weren't present there prior to the 18th century, or are you also claiming that the Nats never really had a significant presence there, um, according to you know what you've researched and what you know so far? Mm. Uh, yeah. Uh... That's that's. I mean, to to answer it properly, it would be uh, it would take a lot of time. And and I am I basically 
I'm not sure <laughs> that that's the that's the basic answer. And I think that the, the history of the householders uh, NAS in Bengal is, is quite complex and probably uh, the, the community uh, has been formed in the history from various sources. And I think that the main source were, were, were the weavers who came from the west of Bengal and from the west of India, yeah. sometimes for some reasons, etc., etc. The I, I mentioned also in my talk uh, the uh, the uh, Bards Jugis from Rangpur, and apparently this community was different. They did not mix with other Jugis. Uh, they 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 uh, they have apparently I I think that they have different history from the majority of the Jugis in other parts of Bengal. But again, we uh, we don't have, we don't know anything ab about them. Uh, I guess again that they came from from the west of India from somewhere, because we know there were communities of these wandering uh, wandering yogis, and we also have in colonial sources some uh, some evidence that let's say that uh, these bards uh, bards uh, jugis or uh, yogis from let's say Bihar uh, regularly uh, regularly went to to eastern parts, and it's. It's imaginable that uh, somehow and for some reasons one of these communities settled uh, in 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 uh, in Rangpur or in Racha in the district, but uh, we, we and I am afraid that uh, it will be very difficult to find because we don't have simply we don't have sources for the 17th century. We have some Persian sources, but not on on this social on this on this caste mobility or moving here and there. Uh, I'm afraid it will be really very difficult to 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 prove to prove anything, you know, and there is probably well, a third source of this community, and uh, that that's that's quite difficult. It's, uh, we have attested uh, one community in in some uh, texts called Yungis, not not Yugis, but Yungis, and that's a question whether they are related to this to these Yugis or not. So so. Briefly, I, I think that their history is really very complex and, uh, and we lack uh, data and sources and evidence for, for uh, creating a more, uh, more uh, clear history of, of, this, uh, of this cast. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Hunter and Louis. Can I go to Jim, please? You've put loads of questions into the Slido. Over to you. Unmute. Hi, Jim. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Hi, Lubomir. Um, thanks very much for that. It was great. Um, you know, confirmed, confirmed sort of hunches that I've had for years, but not yeah. linguistic skills or whatever to, to investigate. Um, but I mean, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm totally convinced, but I just, you know, there are a few, a few historical and even current references to Nath yogis in, in Bengal, in West Bengal. So I, I, well, I've got them here somewhere. Um, there's a there's a, a 1455 inscription in Kathmandu which mentions a Chaitanya Nata from Golda Desha. So presumably, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I got there's an interesting Portuguese report uh, from 1560 from Goa uh, talks of a Bengali yogi spreading fear that that, that Goa was going to be conquered. So there's the odd, you know, there's the odd reference and, and another. I don't, oh, the, a text. I don't know if you've looked into it the um sanskrit text called the seka shubhodaya yes you know i know this text yeah 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 yeah. and that seems to mention some yogis whose names end in nath yes yes that's true so there's a few references and also then i was just looking at the um the yogi mahasabha website mm. as it does mention seven nath stans in bengal yeah, but it's uh, yeah. I checked this, uh, and I uh, I talked to quite a lot of people in in in, in I mean the Nats there, and uh, most of them are are from uh, are Kolkata or West Bengal, yeah. and they are quite new. Yeah, that's uh, okay. probably if I mean 18th century the earliest or maybe 17th. Okay. So yeah. Mahanath, yeah, Mahanath is the one of the famous, and and from the from the archaeological sources we know that Mahanath was original Vaishnava place, and at some time it was took by by the Nats, yeah, they, okay. probably in the 17th century, but that's that's West, West Bengal, you know, and West Bengal was more connected, let's say, to Bihar, 
yeah but uh, but we are talking uh, i mean these householder nuts uh, they were they were present uh, in the eastern parts of bengal this uh, chittagong silhet moimonsing etc etc and not not related so i think that yes that uh, since let's say 18th century we have uh, definitely evidence for the presence of ascetic nuts in west bengal uh, they are a few unclear references to, to some matkhas, even in Eastern Bengal, uh, in, in Dinajpur district, in, in uh, Rangpur district. But uh, these, um, these references are not, uh, I would not uh, call them a clear evidence. They are, they are disputed or, and th there is one place uh, called, uh, called uh, uh, Jugir Bhobon, yeah, it's in uh, Rangpur district. And uh, I was pretty sure that it's, uh, it's a Nadha place, but uh, Brian Hatcher, who, 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 who is now doing research on, uh, on um, Dashanami Sampradaya in Bengal, uh, he, 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 he writes that it's a, it's a Dashanami place. So it, it did not belong to, to the Nats, but to the Giris. Yeah. So, uh, uh, further research is needed, definitely. So there, there are here and there, there are some hints uh, of, of these uh, uh, ascetic, ascetic nuts in, in, in Bengal. But definitely we cannot uh, put from it uh, that there was a established, established network of, uh, of uh, Nadha Sampradaya in, in, in this part. Okay, thanks. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it, as well, how the, the caste can exist without the ascetics. Because I think yes. it's the same yes. in South yes. India and Kerala. Don't yeah, have yeah. Pass down there, and no, no actual mutters, no, no yogi ascetics at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and, and they are that's that's difficult for them, particularly now, because they are they are quite lost. You know, <laughs> they 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 don't have any yoga tradition. They they now trying to come back to to their invite. The invented history, but there is no help around. I mean, now it's the help with some, some, let's say, missionary work. Yeah, yeah but uh, from from people outside outside of of Bengal. But for them, it's it's very difficult because because their identity is now built on their famous yogic history, but they don't have anything in hands. You know, so that's that's really difficult. Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks. That's great. Uh, thank you. Can I, um, leave me, we're technically at finishing time in one minute, but we do okay. have a few more questions in the Slido. May, I, may we um, have two more questions? Is that okay? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, that's no problem. Okay, can I ask um, Diane Farrig, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, Farrig, to ask you a question, please. And if you are not there, I'll ask it for you. So this is Samyukta Diane Farag has asked, do you think that the Dehatattva focus may be a foreign influence from other Asian regions outside of the South Asian subcontinent? Oh, that's a very general question. Uh, I don't know. I don't know, but uh, but uh, what's what's really striking if you if you read these Bengali texts. Uh, as I said in in the lecture, it seems that they are they are really almost obsessed with, with this with this deha tatva and uh, it's uh, i would say that's the main topic of all these so called natha or yogic or or even songs it 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 almost became became a folklore some some uh, some concepts if 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 you read a uh, if you read folk literature in, from from Bengal and Bangladesh, so some of these topics on deha tatva uh, were, were were so 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 well known uh, both among Hindus and and and, and Muslims. Uh, where, What's the source of this of this obsession yeah, or of these topics? Uh, I, I cannot say, of course. Yeah, but but I don't think that's necessary to to search for it uh, um, outside. I mean, even even uh, for from for, for some foreign foreign source. Uh, um, I don't know. I, I think that just just when experimenting with with, with body and uh, uh, and uh, putting. Uh, some sources like tantric texts and and uh, the text on Ayurveda, where you have passages on embryology, and as I mentioned, these uh, these um, uh, erotic manuals, uh, where there are passages on particularly the circulating of this chandra, of this bindu, of this sperm. Yeah. So all this putting together, we have, we have enough, enough sources uh, uh, for, for creating uh, this concept of uh, or obsession for, for, for Deha Tattva. 
Great, thank you. Um, yeah, very interested in those sources. I'll go for the final question, if we can take, it's anonymous, so I'll read it out. Please comment on nut secrecy. How do the nuts feel about their practices and traditions being inv investigated and publicized? Oh, that's, uh, I, from, from the Bengal point of view, uh, um, I cannot say, say anything because, uh, as I said, there are no, no not ascetics. I did not meet, I did not meet any, 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 any uh, Bengali uh, uh, not matha or ashram or yogis. So uh, I cannot say anything about, about, about this topic, about their secrecy or, or teachings like this. Uh, Everything I learned on, on this topic uh, is from non in in, in in Bengal. It's very, very different. Great. Thank you ever so much. Thank you for such a fascinating presentation. And I'm sure we're all looking forward to the volume coming out on the nuts. Um, and I'll just hand over to Theo to finish. <laughs>